All right, we have a sick pod collab tonight, the Talking Titans and the Anvil Show. I am joined by my man Big P and Costa. Let's waste no more time. we got a lot to talk about. Sammy, start me up. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to the Sick Podcast. It's going to be sick. All right, well, welcome to another show, another collab, a sick pod collab. I'm joined by my man Big P and Costa, a couple Colts fans, a couple division rivals. How are we doing tonight, fellas? Doing good, doing good. How yourself? I'm doing all right. I'm flying solo. My two counterparts left me to duke it out with you two. So, um, you know, I'm excited, <laughs> to, excited to get into the matchup because it's an interesting one for both of us. Very very important for you guys if you guys want to stay relevant in that race and um you know for us it's kind of do or die although i think we're probably on the outside looking in but for you guys a a matchup that you know can mean a lot there's a big difference between being what seven and five and six and six so you know how, how do you guys feel about um you know your season so far this year i mean i wasn't on the show when when you guys were on it before with sal and jared so i never really talked to you about you know, our rivalry and how you guys are doing the last few years, how we're doing the last few years. So how do you guys feel about this week's matchup and your season in general? Because it's been a a bit of a wild one for you guys. It's been an injury-riddled season. It's been a suspended-riddled season. You know, we lost one of our – he was going to be a starting corner to a gambling violation. We lost lost one of our biggest run stoppers to a PED – suspension we lose our our bright new shiny quarterback go through the troubles with jt and and his extension and now he's out Mm -hmm. another two to three weeks because of a thumb surgery i mean it's just like when the shit gets rolling it ain't gonna stop because it's freaking pommeling us right now yeah i mean we're no we're no um you know stranger to Injuries and whatnot the last two years, the Titans have been one of the most injury-riddled season, uh, teams in the history of the league. So, you know, I, I have yeah, a what was it? What was it like three years ago when you guys literally had a different team on the field every yeah, single week because was, of the injury? I think we had a, 110 different active players at a certain point for Sundays. Like, that's how Jesus. many people – yeah, it was, it was insane. It was two years in a row. You know, it, it is what it is. It's part of the game. But at a certain point, it almost felt like this can't be a coincidence. You know, there's got to be a deeper issue here. So I have a little bit of sympathy for you, you know, with the, what you're going through. But not much because you are a division rival. Um, <laughs> um, so a couple questions I had for you guys because you talked about that shiny new quarterback. And, you know, how how shiny do you think he can be? Are you worried at all about him staying healthy considering his style of play? Um, and how do you feel about, you know, Gardner Minshew? Do you think if they get into the playoffs that he deserves a, you know, a shot, even though they just drafted someone, you know, last year? You want this at first? <clears throat> yeah, sure. Um, I mean, as far as AR goes, I think his style of play, he can be physical. He needs to be physical. But I think he also has to be smart most of the time. Um, he needs to choose when to get down. That's been his biggest issue. We like it was kind of funny. Uh, I think it was our second home game. He actually learned how to slide for the first time, and everybody lost their shit. So because uh, they were worried about what it, and it, you know uh, eventually happened. But I just think if he play starts playing smart, gets some more reps in, you know, he'll I think he'll adapt very well. Um, as far as Gardner goes, he's mostly doing what he said he's to- doing. Uh, telling AR, you know, he's going to hold stuff down while he's gone because this is his team. You know, you can't help but to respect the guy for his sportsmanship and leadership, you know, while AR is out. Um, you, the only problem I've had with him is he scrambles too much and he doesn't uh, make quick enough decisions and he loses the ball quite a bit. Yeah. Um, but other than that, you know, he's doing a damn good job. You know, I mean, we're above 500, you know, going into a division game. So, you know, can't really complain too much with what we got going on. Yeah, no, I uh, I'm no stranger to Gardner Minshew either. He was with the 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 uh, Jaguars for a few years. Um, you know, he was in Philly last year, and I live in South Jersey, literally 15 minutes outside of Philly. So, 
saw a little bit of him last year as well when he was their backup. He's a premier backup. He could be probably a fringe starter, Ryan Fitzpatrick type for a very long time in his career. But I think that's what his ceiling is, is a really good backup who could come in and win you some games. And I give him credit for that because there's something to be said for that. But I don't know if exactly he's a franchise guy. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I like Anthony. He can, he can, be, can I, let me interject here. He can be a franchise backup, yeah. if that makes any sense. Yeah. You know, sure. with what he's done so far this year for us, I think he deserves you know, a good size extension. You yeah, know? I mean, listen, it's all about, you know, what he wants to do. Yeah. If he can get, yeah, a, yeah if he can get a, you know, uh, an opportunity to maybe start, he might take less money and less years to do that. But yeah, I agree. If you can keep him for your backup, I don't know what a, like that contract would look like a three year, $10 million deal, fully guaranteed 15 million, you know, for a top notch backup, but then you'd also be paying a long term not to play really. So, um, but, yeah, but, as- but you're, you're, pay- you're paying for that safety net. You're not necessarily paying him not to play, but you're paying to have that safety net there, yeah. especially, especially, and, and to go back to answer your original question, um, when you got a running quarterback and you got a coach that likes to design plays for that running quarterback, because in my opinion, that's when every running quarterback gets hurt is on the designed run plays for them. Yeah. Typically they don't get hurt when they're scrambling out of the pocket just to, you know, extend that play a little bit, give their receiver a little bit more time to get opened up and then, you know, drop the ball on them. It's those designed run plays. I don't see Coach Steichen changing his philosophy just because Anthony got hurt. I see him changing his play calling a little bit, you know, maybe keeping keeping a, a, a shadow tight end around him when he does break away you know, to, to take the grunt of any hits. But I don't I don't see him backing off of his designed run calls. No, I mean, you're not going to take away from what makes him him. You know, you're going to play to his strengths. But that style play has to concern you. I don't care how good any quarterback is. It just always seems as time goes on, it starts to wear on you. I mean, Lamar has stayed healthy this year, but the previous two years he missed time. Cam's no longer in the league. So, I mean, listen, you live die, you live by it and you die by it when that's your style. It's fun. Absolutely. It's fun yeah. and it's, it's exciting when it works, but then you also have to – it comes with the territory of season-ending injuries. And not that Mariota was that kind of quarterback as well, not as maybe big as Anthony Richardson, but same style. And he just couldn't stay healthy. It was injury after injury, and you feel like you ruin a quarterback. So, you know, an injury in your first year is nothing something is, – is nothing – you know, you you want to see for your young quarterback, but it actually was against us, wasn't it? It was. It was it yeah, was. that was that was unfortunate. You know, he was playing well, and you know, I don't wish injury on anybody as much as I might, you know, despise everyone else in the AFC South. You know, hopefully he'll be all right, and we'll uh, have matchups year to come with your boy and our shiny new toy, Mister Will Levis, who I think a lot of Titans fans were on the um, you know. 50 50 some people liked him some people didn't sal loved him jared and i really weren't huge fans of him but um he has come in and he has looked more than competent he has showed that he can be calm cool collect and make decisions at the line um has a hell of an arm can make any throw on the field um do you guys think that the titans found their guy just like you think you found the colts found their guy do you think will levis could be a problem in that division along with trevor lawrence and cj stroud my my opinion on Levis hasn't changed. He's got the talent. He's got the arm strength. It appears, and I haven't watched too much of film this year of him, but going through draft film, uh, he's got the smarts. Yeah. But does he have the right coaching around him? Yeah. See, and that's what I'm definitely going to hang my hat on on AR is that Ballard has put the right coaching staff around this young man to – you know, really excel him in his development. Now, if Levis can get that same kind of attention on him, yeah, he, he can be a monster. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's going to be a problem if he is not mismanaged, if they do the right thing by him, surround him with protection, weapons, and a competent, you know, offensive play caller. 
we know, you know, we, it has happened to you guys, not to make jokes, but with Andrew Luck, how you could really ruin a quarterback by yep. not, by not, by yeah. not, by not protecting him, by not, you know, investing in around him. And, you know, I just hope that you know, it's not the case with Will Levis. I, we haven't had a franchise quarterback literally, you know, all may rest in peace, Steve McNair. I mean, it's sad to say we've gone through a laundry list of, 15 to 20 quarterbacks over the last 20 years that haven't been it with Tannehill kind of being, you know, a middle tier guy was never really, you know, anything who was going to give you nightmares at night. Um, so yeah. he was, Tannehill to me was the hope quarterback. Yeah. I mean, he, he, he always seemed to give the Titans fans hope, sure. but then he'd always crush it. Sure. I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, listen, nobody expected him when he came in for Mariota to, you know, take us to the title game that year. Granted, it was on the shoulders of, you know, Derrick Henry. But, you know, you got to give credit where credit's due for a couple of years. He put out outstanding numbers. You know, we were rolling that offense. Art Smith had us really going. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, you, guys, you, know, you guys led the lead. Yeah. At, at one point. Yeah, yeah, over 30 points a game. And, you know, he was always, to me, a guy who was, when you surround them with competent protection, play calling, and weapons, he can be a top 10 to 12 guy at his best. At his worst, he could be a top – I mean, a bottom 20 guy. You know what I mean? A bottom, you know, 10 guy in the league. He was that fringe Kirk Cousins where at times he looks good, times he looks bad. But you were always a little bit more worried about him losing a game for you than you are winning it for you. Um, but hopefully, I mean, Levis looks like he could be the real deal. I mean, I was – this kid has done nothing but, you know, won my approval for the last five weeks, especially with inadequate protection, inadequate talent around them. Um, inadequate play calling, it seems. So, yeah, good call with, you know, having this around him with the proper coaching, proper play calling, because uh, right now, I mean, we're at a standstill with our coach. I know our fan base is split with Rabel and his decisions he's made. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with them in the future with Levis, but I like him. Um, how do you guys see yourselves really attacking us on Sunday? How do you see – what do you think your game plan will be to, um, you know – take us down and sweep us for the season. I mean, really, it's kind of, I hate to say it, it's been our Achilles heel for a while because of the play calling, but it's really going to come down to defense um, for us. Our defense is going to have to quit playing individualized football, even though a lot of our individual players, Zaire Franklin, DeForest Buckner, Kenny Moore, is really having good years. You know, they combined over the last three games for 16 sacks, you know, and a couple turnovers and stuff like that. But it's really going to call – Come down to this play calling. I know Will Levis will eat us up in the middle of the field, and that's going to be uh, a problem for us because we run this stupid cover, soft coverage, cover three, and it's just been eating us up this whole time. And that middle of that field is still wide open. Um, but you know, it's going to come down to maybe some good pass rushing from our defensive front, uh, which has been also hurt due to Grover Stewart being out. You know, with his suspension and everything, but. Um, also, obviously, keep Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry in check. You can't go without, you know, uh, looking out for him. So, um, but then, you know, offense, you know, we're going to keep doing what we're doing on offense and stay consistent with the play calling, you know. Um, not No razzle-dazzle, I don't think, you know. I know we did it. You know, we had one, one play. It was a fake punt with Zaire Franklin as a fullback last week. But, um yeah, I mean, it's just going to be consistent play calling across the board, more aggressive defensive play calling. I, that's my opinion on how we're going to win this game. Yeah, that 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 soft zone they run, uh, you guys can eat us up in the middle. Move move the chains, and then give it to Henry to pound it in. That's I mean, what scared. That's what's scaring the shit out of me out of this game. But I remember the game last year, and all our focus went to Henry. And who was uh, his his backup running back back yet last year? Last year, uh, I don't even know to be honest with you. Yeah, whoever it was, you know, since all our attention was on Henry, he's the backup is was the one that was getting the ball. Uh, maybe it was here we had Dante Foreman. We didn't have him last year, but the year before that we did. Yeah, but and and then he just he got like a hundred and something damn yards on us because all our attention was on Henry, and I can I can see that kind of game plan coming in in, in effect too because we we were so effective this year stopping Henry. I think we I think 
here at home, uh, he had what forty two yards or something, you know. And to stop that beast, you know, like that, that's pretty impressive. So I can see Vrabel, you know, trying to play some chess when other people are playing checkers. I mean that you're giving him more credit than a lot of Titans fans would right now with uh, with Vrabel. But yeah, I mean, hey, we, it's just it's just because Titans fans are upset. Uh, Upset about what? Upset losing. About what? Illusion. Illusion. We haven't done much losing the last five or six years. You know, these, these it last doesn't matter. Years. The, the, this game is a prove it now game. It doesn't matter what you've done last year. It doesn't matter what you did five years ago. It matters what you're doing right now. No, and I right, agree. It's and right now, right now, right now you're losing and yeah. you know, everybody's in their fields. Oh, we <laughs> got to change this. We got to do this. Oh, we got, you know, we got to fix it now, fix it now. You know, every fan base does it, though. We yeah. do, it. you know, yeah. uh, because because it's the losing. That's the only thing that sticks in a fan's head. Are yeah. you winning or are you losing? Because, look, our our, it, our conversations are going to be different when we win versus when we lose. Sure. Absolutely. When we lose, we're not so or, or when we win, we're not so critical of all the stupid shit that we did see. And yeah. we don't even talk about it because we won. So yeah. when you win, you you know, you ride that high and you stay on the positive. But when you lose, you're drugged down into the negative side of things. And just unfortunately, right now, you guys have that that negative downslide on everything and you're not believing in anything. Honestly, if, what was it two years ago, three years ago when Vrabel won coach of the year? Yeah, we were the one seed without – we went that whole year without Derrick Henry, missed like eight or nine games. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's a uh, it's it's a tough situation because we're awfully thankful for Vrabel, and he was a part of the turnaround for sure. The last five or six years, we've won two division titles, went to the playoffs three times, went to a title game. Our issue with Vrabel is, is that it seems like the last two years, really, um, the losses have been piling up. And you're right, it does eat at you after a while. But it's been his inability, really, to take responsibility. A lot of the times, it's been frustrating fans. Uh, his decision making, keeping Todd Downing around for two years, was awful. We went from Arthur Smith and an ultimate high to Todd Downing and an ultimate low. And Vrabel kept him around for an extra year. He likes to keep his coaching staff real, like you know, people that he knows, people that he played with, people that he's worked with in the past, instead of maybe someone who's best for your franchise, best for your team, best for your young quarterback. So our frustration is more with him and. His attitude lately, I know it, it frustrated a lot of Titans fans how happy he was when the Patriots retired his jersey, and then he comes to practice next week like a fucking pissy teenage girl. So, you know, <laughs> it, it's uh, that's where our frustration is. Obviously, we're thankful for him. I don't think really, now that I've thought on it for weeks on end, I don't think they're going to get rid of him. It wouldn't surprise me. You know, I think his last 20 games, he's like 4-16, and 16, so – uh, I think if he's going to say there's going to be big changes, but I mean, listen, he can definitely coach football. If we let him go, he'd be gone for, he'd be unemployed for five minutes. You know, he, he would get a job overnight. It seems yeah, Carolina, um, Carolina would pick him up like that. Yes. As somebody well, listen, he can even go to back to college. If he wanted one, a top tier, um, you know, college program as a coach who's known as a motivator. I could see him being, he was at Ohio state as a coordinator before he went to the NFL. And he's Ohio State grad, so if Ryan Day ever wanted to leave, you know, they might throw the bank at Mike Vrabel. Who knows? Um, but that's neither here nor there. We'll, we'll see what happens. I think our plan to attack you guys will be, uh, you know, hopefully protect Will Levis, you know, make sure he has time to throw because when he does, he's shown that he could put the ball anywhere. But we go as Derrick Henry goes. I've always said it. Even this year where it seems to be a down year, I think – Still think he's top five in the rush in, in rushing right now, um, behind easily the worst line of football. Maybe Carolina's worse, but we're up there. So we go as his go as he goes. Um, you know, your guys' offense, it's it's frustrating sometimes because you really don't think there's many, you know, great household names on there, but you seem to put up points every week. I'm a big fan. I have Josh Downs, I'll admit it on a couple fantasy teams. He was a big pickup earlier in the year. I'm a big fan of Michael Pittman. Jonathan Taylor, shout out South Jersey. He's a South Jersey native. I don't know where he's from, but he's a Jersey guy. So you guys, um, you know, have some formidable talent. Do you think uh, after this year you guys will look to extend someone like Pittman? I know he's going to be a free agent. And did you uh, like did you like the Jonathan Taylor um, extension? And how were you? What were your feelings about him and the whole holdout? Were you done with him and ready to move on, or were you surprised when they finally extended him? 
Well, <laughs> so There's, this is going to be long winded answers here. <laughs> so at first, yes, because from the outside looking in, because it seemed like your goofy oh, well, owner was like, yeah, we don't need him, this, that, and the third. And then a few weeks later, he's 18, what is it, 15, 16 million a year? Yeah. yeah. So like, that's what I'm going to get. That's what I'm going to kind of touch on. So at first, yeah, from the outside looking in, you know, speculating and all this other shit, um, he just didn't seem like he wanted to be here. It seemed like he was holding out on different things. But Zaire Franklin actually started a podcast not too long ago called The Trench, The, the Trenches Show. And he, he was the first guest that they had on it. And they got into his conversation and or got into conversation with his uh, contract talks a little bit. And he actually went in depth as himself, not as just a professional player, but as himself. You know, and he's just like, you know, um, the reason why I wasn't always around is because, for one, he's like, I was rehabbing. He's like, I wanted to get back on the field. I wanted to, you know, get back stronger than, than I possibly – or stronger than I could be. Um, with that weak ankle of his, so he's like, and everyone thinks that these NFL facilities have all these uh, am amenities as far as all these rehab centers and all that within their uh, facility, but they don't. So he's got to go to outside resources. He's like, that's why I wasn't there most of the time. And, you know, and the whole thing of me not smiling on the field. He's like, that was just my face. I wasn't mad. I wasn't frustrated. You know, I just, I don't got to smile all the time. I don't got to put on this persona for people. Um, so a lot of people were just speculating and, you know, getting clickbait and all this other stuff. So after listening to him talk, you know, he obviously went into more in depth of it. But after listening to him talk, I mean, it was a good thing. He really did want to be here. Jim Ursay really wanted him here. Um, the whole thing that Jim Ursay initially, how this whole thing really started with his tweet, wasn't pointed at Jonathan Taylor. He was doing it toward the league mo mostly. Um, but. I love that we got to extend him. I love he got to stay home in Indy. You know, all every cent he has earned for us. Um, and then as far as like Pittman goes, after this year, he's really showed that he's a right wide receiver one for us. We just need to get him some assistance in there, maybe in the draft next year. I pick him a good free agent, maybe. But yes, yeah, so I think we're going to extend him. Um, yeah, I mean, with all that being said, it's just. I'm happy overall. I'll agree with everything you just said, but I'm going to stick to my guns. And I said it on our program one day because when he asked to be traded, you know, I instantly went to the, to the, the feel goods and fine. If you don't want to be here, go. Yeah, yeah. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't mad at him. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't surprised. I wasn't, you know, but, Honestly, if you don't want to be here, I really don't want you here because you're yeah. going to become a cancer. Yeah. You know, but that same episode that Costa was just talking about, he he flat out said, hey, I told my wife, I told my agent, I will be an indie. I ain't going nowhere else. You know, now, now you got to take a man for his word until he's proven otherwise. You know, so that made me feel better. I was glad that they got a deal done. I am, you know, extremely happy that uh, he's back on the field. Michael Pitton absolutely is going to get a, a contract. What kind of number do you think he'll get? I think he'll get like 20. <sighs> Probably like four for 80, maybe something like that with like 50 something guaranteed. I, I, I can see 15 to eight, 15 to 18 a year with a lot of in, incentives. Yeah. Yes. That's just, yeah, yeah that's just my perspective. Um, yeah. But number I, one, really, you got to pay him. If he's a true one, they're, they're, there's yeah. one getting close to 30. You got to pay him. I mean, if he, he wanted to test the market, he might get some team desperate enough to pay him 20 million a year. He could, he could, because yeah. he, he is a flat dog, and he, he's yeah. a flat dog out there, and everybody sees it. Everybody yeah. sees his, his his passion for the game, and if it's him and and a, a double set receiver, he's coming down with the ball. He's going to yeah. fight you to the nail, uh, in the air, all the way down to the ground. You yeah, know? No, and, I, and I don't think Ballard will penalize him because he's had a different quarterback every year yeah. of his career here. No, absolutely. Um, you know, but will he pay him top, top dollar, top market? I, I'm going to say no because he just has. 
yeah, he just hasn't had the numbers that require top dollar. Yeah. But he could if he had consistent quarterback. Yeah, and it's a tough situation too because you just paid your running back. And I think you would, if you asked a lot of Titans fans, would you have rather traded Henry and just paid AJ Brown all the money he wanted? Would you have done it? Sure. So if you're you're going to pay that running back, you got to pay the receiver too. You know, now, in my opinion. Now, just yeah. realize we just cut a uh, Shaquille Leonard. I was going to ask, and, about and that, that and that that puts fifty million back into our cap. Yeah. So well, you know, is there something there? I don't know. We'll see. Speaking of him, though, were you surprised to see that move? I don't really follow the Colts realm at all. I don't beef with your fans on Twitter. It's not my cup of tea. Um, but what was behind all that? Was he not playing well? I know there was injury issues the last few years. Ever since he changed his name, he kind of sucks now. I don't know what his deal is. <laughs> but, you know, is it was that something that you guys saw coming as a fan base? Because it was Didn't really – did not see no. it coming in the middle of the year like it did. You know, maybe at the end of the year, at, at the end of the season, because everybody's seen his production going downhill. Everybody, mm -hmm. like you said, you know, Shaquille Leonard is not the maniac. Darius Leonard is the maniac. I was going to say, he's been Shaquille for a few, ne a few years, and I forgot what his real name was. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it, and and if the fans can see it, you, you better believe the front office can see it. Sure, sure. You know, because I mean, they – they look a lot harder at, at tape than we ever will. Because he was what? He's in the second or third year of what? A five, six year, $100 million deal, some shit like that? Second, yeah. Second year. Yeah. Second year. Oh, wow. But like that, dude, that back surgery just really messed his mobility up. Cause I mean, he's not that quick. If you could see him even in person, like at practices at training camp when he was getting limited snaps there on the field uh, at Lucas Oil Stadium. Dude, he just he was coming off slow. It almost looked sluggish in a way. I know we said a little up higher than most fans do on the field, but it looked sluggish to me. Like he didn't have that quick step anymore. He wasn't always in pursuit to the ball like he used to, like we see Zaire Franklin doing now. You know, he wasn't involved. He wasn't making no big plays. You know, it seemed like he wasn't trying to attempt like that famous peanut punch of his. And I mean, he just wasn't it's he just simply wasn't himself anymore. We I mean, in a previous couple of previous episodes, Clyde, you know, really went out on a limb and really like pulled a sow, really, you know, really <laughs> uh, got, got, got all up in his feelings about it, you know, because he, he's like, oh, you don't cut it all pro and blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, my opinion was, and I'll keep saying it till I die. They limited his snaps, yes, for one, to protect himself. It's a back surgery, no back surgery, major or minor. It's back surgery. It doesn't matter. Like it's it's a serious thing when it comes to your back, and they didn't want to see him hurt. They wanted him to come back, you know, in a limited role. And he expressed his frustrations about it. But I'm like, look, if you're going to get limited snaps, why not go out there and play your heart out in those limited snaps to show these people that you are, you say, healthy, right? He didn't do that. He did not do that, and he's not. He's definitely not the maniac of old. Yeah, it's I just, mean, yeah. he was a problem for a few years. I mean, he was all over the field. Probably better off, though, maybe going with a team that has a really good defense where he doesn't have to, you know, run all over the field. You know what I mean? He can just have one or two, you know, tasks on the field. You see Dallas looked at him, Philly looked at him. I think he's going to end up in Philly. But, yeah, I mean, I was surprised by it. I know the injury, there was injury issues, and I don't know how he was playing this year, really, but when I – saw on Twitter that they released him. I mean, I was a bit surprised because I know they just paid him too. But, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens, I guess. But we'll see if his presence is really felt because you never really know someone's presence, I like to say, until they're gone. You know, we, we learned it with uh, A.J. Brown. We thought maybe Traylon Burks would come in and make us forget about him a little bit. He has not at all. And we missed the presence of A.J. Brown for sure. So, We'll see what happens with you guys and Shaquille Leonard, uh, Darius Leonard, whatever you want to call him, not being out there anymore for you guys. So, um, with that being said, though, before we finish, let's let's get some predictions in here because I'm sure we'll have uh, you guys will have say one a little more different than mine. So, twenty-seven seventeen Colts. I'm gonna say. 24-14 Colts. 
Okay, well, I am going to respectfully disagree, and I am going to say we are going to win 24-21 to 21 on a last-second Nick Folk field goal. We will see, though. You guys are a big game for both of us, really. I mean, if we want to have any hope at still being relevant for that last wild card spot, we need to win, and you guys need to win to keep pace with it because you are, what, 6-5 and five right now? Yep. 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 All right. Well, big difference between seven and five and six and six. Um, we'll see though. It should be a tough game. It usually is with us. Um, the last few years we've seemed to dominate you, but um, you got us on the first one this year. Uh, we're undefeated at home, so maybe it will be a different outcome. We know DeAndre Hopkins ate you up last time, and Ryan Tannehill was his quarterback. So let's see what young Will Him Levis can do for us. Um, but Great collab tonight. Let's give one more shout out to our, our sponsors over at DraftKings. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use DraftKings code 6 Sports to get $150 in bonus bets instantly when you bet just $5 on any NFL bet. And we want to bet responsibly as well. If you have a gambling problem, call 1 800 Gambler. Bet with your head. Don't bet over it. It was a great show tonight, guys. Cool. Yeah, appreciate cool appreciate class. you taking the time. Yeah, no, we're talking yeah. some football awesome. with us, man. Yeah, no, it was nice to uh, meet you guys. I was in Key West last time. I remember they threw my picture up. I had the cigar with the turkey, <laughs> and the man. Just pure sexiness dripping all over the place. You know. Now, now, I love now the Anvil crew is going to be at the game. Okay. And, and, and oh yeah, that's right. That's right. We. I wanted to tell your 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 buddy Andrew that he is the smartest one in your family. <laughs> I heard I heard that he is the only Titans fan. And wear the two tone blue, loud and proud. Don't let these Colts fans, you know, tell you what to do. You get all up in their faces if they get all up in yours, buddy. And enjoy the game. And now that I know Andrew's going, now I know it's definitely going to be a Titans win. He's going to be talking smack all the way home. Oh shit. <laughs> Oh, here we go. They're going to be a rough ride. <laughs> yeah, for one somebody's going to be a uh, Akasha, do you know where we're tailgating? Oh, uh, off the top of my head, no. Hang on. Yeah, well, while he's, I, looking, I, while he's looking it up, <clears throat> yeah, but um, at our home tailgates, you know, we have an actual anvil out there that everybody hits and nice. you know, has a lot of sh fun. We, we bounce shots off of them. Uh, we're actually going to bring the anvil with us. Ah, uh -huh. you want to start yeah. some shit? Start the pot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't yeah. been in a good scrap in a while, so there you go. Hey, I always say sometimes I probably could use a good ass beating. You know, exactly, exactly. exactly. It humbles your ass, don't yeah, it? Exactly. Yeah. No character, I like to say. You know. Um. <laughs> so, so where we're gonna be telling where we're gonna be tailgating that guys is the street is South Second Street. It's the uh, old PSC Metals Yard. Parking's okay. $40, so we're going to be eh, maybe a third of a mile from the stadium, it looks like. Um, I posted it on Facebook and everything, so if anybody wants to double-check with that. Yeah, if you guys um, are down there, come to swing by, swing by. Yeah, absolutely. I live up in uh, sunny New Jersey. I've been in Nashville twice. I was there earlier this year to see them uh, win at home week two. It's for my bachelor party. Been there a few times. Can't not have fun in, in Nashville. Go up and down Broadway. Enjoy those bars. Um, it's a great time. Um, but with that being said, uh, thanks uh, to your buddy, Andrew, for being such a fan of the sick podcast, Talking Titans. We're going to have to ask him who his favorite is, if it's me, Jared, or Sal. You know, I'm going to <laughs> I'm gonna have to find that one out. We're all a little different, um, unique in our own ways, but – Enjoy the game, Andrew. Enjoy that Titans win. Like I said, don't take any smack from these Colts fans. They think they're tough, but they're not. Don't let them come in here and um, <laughs> don't don't let them come in here and, and think they own the place. You know, so wear that two tone blue loud and proud, and be loud on the way home when they win. So enjoy yourself. Thanks for the thanks for the clap tonight, guys. I enjoyed it. It was nice to meet you. Um, I'm sure Thank we'll you, be talk, we'll be talking soon. You know, we we'll, we've we've Built a bit of a rivalry the last few years, and you know, yeah, I'm, I'm almost happy for you. you won a game this year because now it's a little bit more of a rivalry. It's not really a rivalry when you, you know, haven't won a game in three years, but you finally, yeah. won, we finally, yeah. finally won one. Congratulations! We'll see how it goes on Sunday and who really gets the last laugh. So, well, that, wait a minute for a parting, uh, a parting question. 
Okay. How many games did you guys win against Andrew Luck? Uh, not <laughs> many, nor did we win any against Peyton Manning. So that's why I have no sympathy for the bullshit you have dealt with. <laughs> you ruined, you ruined Andrew Luck. Philip Rivers was a joke. Matt Ryan was a joke. Carson Wentz was a joke. And now you drafted a college quarterback who went six and seven in his senior year, third overall. So, you know, I wish you guys nothing but the best. I hope Jim Mersey sticks to water before he gets, uh, makes any more rash decisions. And uh, <laughs> we will see everybody in Nashville this weekend. <laughs> yes. Have a good one, guys. Enjoy yourself. Be safe. And Sammy, send us out. Tighten up. Peace. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow The Sick Podcast on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.